Hey guys, what's up? I am Jeremy from Wild Tech Designs, and you know what I love? Is when customers show up with their vehicles, especially after I haven't seen them for a while, and they look completely different. This thing's gone through paint, they've added a rear bumper to it. This thing is awesome, and it's all the way from Connecticut. I'm gonna screw that up, even though John just told me what's going on on this. And so I can't wait to talk to him because I know one thing that a lot of you guys say is, you know, you're in snow, you're doing things. Oh, I have to have four wheel drive. I have to, I have to, I have to. So I can't wait to talk to him and tell you what he thinks about needing two wheel drive versus four wheel drive um, as we get to walk around this beast and let him tell us where he's been and where he's going. So it's the man, John, right here. How's it going? So this is John. So John, tell us, you we did this about three years ago. You came out, dropped it off with I us. Left it with you guys. And then flew to Maui, Maui? Or did you guys go? Where did you uh, go? Yeah, we went to Hawaii. Hawaii. Picked it back on the way up. Yeah, but... so and picked it up on the way back. Dude, that's what everybody. Last <laughs> couple, they actually dropped off their motor home and they went to Rome for a month. Oh, that beats us. So yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Can you just take me with you? If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm gonna throw up a card right there and you guys can check that out, that crazy motorhome. So tell me, what have you been doing with this awesome Chinook? This is a Chinook, if I didn't mention it, and it has the Baja Grocery Getter Kit on the front, but where have you been going? What have you been doing with it? So we've been doing uh, some cross country trips and then uh, we used it for snowboarding out east. Uh, we did a couple trips up into Vermont with it and we just been tinkering with the whole time. We did all new windows, redid the interior, uh, new swing out bumper my buddy made for me. Uh, then we got the whole thing painted and now I quit my job a couple weeks ago and we're just traveling. Dude, so I'm, can I, I'm just gonna, one of these days I'm just gonna be like a stowaway and hide in there and, Maybe jump on a helicopter, who knows? But that's super cool. So now you're telling me about your plans. So wait, let's back up before we do that. We are talking about like where you've gone with this, beaches. I know you have gotten yeah. it stuck, but let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so back east uh, in uh, Cape Cod, it's in Massachusetts, National Seashore. For 200 bucks, you can camp all year on the beach for the summer. So we did that for the last three years. Um, pretty soft sand up there. We've been pretty good. We got cut, stuck a couple times, but nothing is quick tug didn't get us out of but uh yeah we debated between four-wheel drive and you know we, we talked about yeah. that but uh we like the two-wheel drive we've done trips up into vermont in the snow and it's gone great no problems i mean no for problem. the most part yeah, that's where I mean, like you have to weigh the cost to what it costs to convert it and still in your opinion it's not there yet you yeah know? for the i'd say it's probably an extra 10 grand if not more to you know between two wheel drive lift and four wheel drive to get it done. So we just we just saw that as more days on the road. So we haven't done it. We've had this lifted for what, two, three years? Yeah, we were saying three years in December. Years. Yeah, yeah so, so we love the two wheel drive on the beach with the dually, the, the contact patch is huge. And we've been out to Moab all over Potash Road and a couple other trails. And we, you know, we go a couple miles in, then we take the bike off and if we want to get deeper, we do that, so. That's pretty awesome. So now, as you guys came in here, so he came in here, he added a bunch more weight to it. So we were looking at what we could do to maybe make a slightly heavier spring pack or what we could do to the back to try to avoid running airbags in the back because we really don't want to lose the articulation yeah. that it has with those rear lead springs. That's a huge benefit in there. So. Um, we'll walk around the back of this thing, see what he has going on there. But before we do that, tell me where you guys are headed next. So we're going to take like two, three years off. Uh, the wife works remote, but I, I quit my job and, uh, we're going to try to do, we're going to go skiing all winter up to Alaska for the summer and then start the Pan America highway down Central America, South America. So, so now if you want to see more about any of this, are you gonna, I know you can see it on Expedition Portal. Yeah, but. You have a build thread on there about yeah. this whole build. And um, then I just have my personal Instagram account, Willie Walderbeast. Hold I on, we'll wait for this helicopter to fly over, so make sure. I won't leave me yeah. alone, that's what I quit doing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if they want to see your adventures also on Instagram, you can go to. Uh, Willie Walderbeast is my personal account. I post post a bunch of photos of this and what we're doing. Okay. I don't really have a specific van. Instagram I'm telling him he needs but... to do just a vlog on it. I mean, what an epic trip. I mean, if anything, it's just like something great for yourself yeah. to look back on. Yeah, and if somebody it. watches it, great, you know, and if not, 
Um, but we'll make sure we put a link to there because I would love for you guys to see more about this and you know just be able to follow them. I mean, I personally love, I live now vicariously <laughs> through my customers yeah, that are yeah. sending me pictures or will tag us and things. I'm like, man, I don't ever, you know, like my life goes from the racetrack to work, you know, yeah. and that's it. But this is awesome. So what do you want to do? You want to go inside or you want to see the back? Let's go to the inside. All right, we're, Austin says we're going to the inside. <laughs> So Samantha, right? Yeah. Oh, Samantha's in here doing house. See, we're gonna we're gonna get her. Look at look at the <laughs> smile. How could you not get Samantha? So she's gonna be your tour guide for the inside. I am. Oh. Geez. Oh, so putting her on the spot. <laughs> Samantha, show us what this is all about inside. All right, come on in. People get sick of me. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what you want to see. So this is just a little yeah. desk uh, that John built. This table just flips up and this just folds down and that sits right there so you could put a cushion there and level it out so someone, I mean small, I would probably sleep there and then John could have another person here if he needed to. And then this table also just clicks up so we have somewhere to eat if we want to. We mostly eat outside but if it was raining or the weather was really bad. And then up here is all our food storage. We have ample storage, really. This is low. There's a lot of stuff in there. And then here we keep all like our coffee and cups. It's in there. And then he added it just was a burner top, and then he added the other one. Oh. Oh. Up here we have just clothes storage. Yeah. So really, we have a lot of storage space. Freezer or refrigerator. This is just, or all of this is just storage. Our bathroom. A mess in there. It's just a wet bath. So wherever the van can't get you though, John, this thing is gonna have to be able to get you there. Yeah, that's so what this thing looks like a ton of fun. So what is this? What do you like doing with this? This is the Adventure Mobile, huh? Yeah, so it's the baby GS BMW just came out with it. I was looking for something small but highway capable so we could rip wherever and we pretty much get the van as far as we could go off road and then we throw the lightweight backpacking gear on this and go a little deeper if we want. So I see it looks like you have a Traeger barbecue back here. We have some Max tracks on here. Our Thank spare you, tire on the back of it. Oh, what else am I missing on the back of this? That is, oh, we got a couple oh, of boxes. Yeah. Boxes back there hold the tools and yeah. ones for firewood. And we got the high lift jack on the side. Everything I didn't want to shove inside. So. And now one really cool thing is I heard you mention that you're not really running the generator as much on this thing because you're able to because you have that full solar up there, right? Yeah. So we barely ever turn the generator on. Once in a while for the AC for the dogs, but. Uh, we got 200 watt solar on the top with a six, uh, we have four six volt batteries in the, on the side over there, golf cart batteries in it. We could run for a week off grid pretty Just much. Just off, see that's we awesome. We have all LED lights, propane fridge, propane uh, stove. We got, we ditched the microwave for more storage. So we're pretty much. No good. microwave at all? Yeah, we got rid of, we never used it cause you'd have to start the generator. So it okay. wasn't worth it. So what have you found? So living in this thing full time, what has been like, what would you say is the biggest obstacle that you've faced? Uh, so we're really only two weeks in or three weeks okay. in, but uh, not too much. I mean, it's a little tight in there, two people, and just what I read everywhere is you're going to bring too much stuff. So we brought too much clothes. I've already threw, thrown out like five t-shirts, and we're trying to just slim down all the gear. So just going through everything, seeing what you're actually going to use and not, and okay. get, getting rid of that. So you, it's a little easier. And now you guys will be staying here in the States for... A few more how long will you be in the states before you head south so we have icon pass and we're gonna ski all winter okay um, and then I think for the summer we're gonna go up to Alaska and go okay. to the tip of the Pan American Highway right. so we could say we did the whole thing did and the, then, okay so by next winter we'll probably be in Mexico and then we'll just keep going okay 
Super, that's yeah. awesome, I love seeing that. So is there anything I missed? I see you guys added a Thule box up to the top for just more storage. Yeah, yeah it has well. some of the snowboard stuff. And okay. We'll switch it out per season and uh, yeah, that's about it. We painted it, we got a bunch of storage in the back. The swing away bumper once the bike's off we're going to ditch the bike for the winter and then pick it back up in april but just not fun to drive in the snow and just way too cold or what? yeah we're just going to be hopping from ski resort to ski resort so it's not really needed but that is very awesome so in the back of this guys as well um so we did do our custom leaf springs in the rear of this um so this is an eight leaf pack that we did in the back of this chinook um which is cool now a the one big thing I remember him telling me was that most of these Chinooks are the rear entry door and the downfall of that rear entry door now is being able to put all this stuff on the back without having to remove it to get in and out unless you're going to want to climb through the driver passenger seat. Yeah. That's something that's really cool on the side of the Chinook because I know some of the other Chinooks that we have done the same kit on, it is a rear entry door. And if you don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to that, I'll throw up a card right here and you can check out those Chinooks as well. Um, same lift kit on there, same sort of deal. Now, that is the one thing I want to touch base on because people always ask that and um, as far as and we mentioned it a little bit is like the ability to run a sway bar on there so you say even you've noticed a have you so we've had it what three years and we've done five cross-country trips now we're back across country again we've never had the sway bar on the front which okay it's pretty good we go down the highway at 80 no problem uh I just was, you know, thinking about maybe doing something. If, if there, there was, was a quick disconnect. If there was something like, for super quick disconnect. But if not, I'll just keep running without it. And that's just, I want to, like, the point of that question is just to really get, like, honest feedback because I'm always curious. Customers ask me, and I want to make sure that I'm giving you guys, you know, relevant, good information, not just pulling something out of the air and being like, oh, yeah, just run with it. Um, I know on a couple of them that we have done, we ran like the 2008 and newer beams. Yeah. And then we upgraded to like the newer sway bar because they will bind up less when off-roading. Gotcha. So yeah. that's something else that you can do and that's on that other Chinook. So just as I kind of just want to make sure we kind of cover everything. So I will tell you on this, we're running, he's running a little bit different size tire. And on this, what have you gone to tire size? Uh, I think so they're these were... 255, 80, 17, the Cooper ST Maxes. I had them on a bunch of vehicles, I like them so. We threw them on this, uh, but there is a clearance issue in between the two dualies. But we ran about 25,000 miles with them touching. They slightly touched the inside nubs, but they've never heated up enough. We've aired down in Moab and on the beaches. We never have a problem. And now, but what we're would, not high speed, right? And then, what would down. you be able? So, like this size of a coach, what would you air down to when you are off-roading it? So when we're in the soft sand in uh, the National Seashore in Cape Cod. We'd air down to about like uh, 18. Okay. And I got stuck, and I think I tried to air down a little more, close to 15, but it was almost coming off. But, okay, but so, never did completely pop. No, the beat. never popped the beat at okay. like 18. You're fine, and your patch is huge. So. Right, and that's another thing. Just more information for you guys, you know, that do want to off-road it, do want to, you know, be able to air down, you know, first-hand experience of, you know, being able to air it down. So I know a lot of times when we do these RVs, and we were discussing that we'll run like a, it was a two. 30 no two now i think it was 235 80, 80. 85 16 yeah and that's just going to be a little bit narrower tire so that you don't have to worry about that rubbing now granted all of these are slightly different and depending on your tire manufacturer that's what we found too like you can run the same size tire but then from one yeah, manufacturer yeah. to another they do get slightly wider so we don't want to drag this out. These guys are, where are you guys off to tonight? You're up to uh, Oceanside. We're going up to Oceanside, then we're going to Palm Springs for a sh car show, so yeah. Nice, just all, all over. Just the <laughs> retired life, I love it. Yeah. So thanks again, John, for hanging out with us, um, letting us you know, see this thing after three years since it's been here. Definitely appreciate that. Glad you are having fun with it. Look forward to more pictures. And so I think that's it. They want to get out of here. They're like, beat it, leave. All right, we will see you guys on the next one.